Zoe! Zoe! Wake up! Hey, I'm up! Come on, man. Buddy, come on, man, let's wake up. Let's go, dude. Zoe, wake up, baby. Wake up, baby. Get your ass up! Up! Come on, man, get up, dude. Stop swinging on me, man, and wake up. Get up! Wake your ass up, Zoe! Hi, baby. Hi, Daddy. I love you. Love you too. You ready to get up? Stop, you dweeb. Get away from me. Hey, where's mom? She left us, and this time it's for good. No thanks to you guys. Then why'd she leave this list? Because I'm messing with you. What does it say? Whoa. It's long. Laundry, pick up clothes from cleaner, room dogs, scrub toilets, grocery shopping, set up tax appointment, pay gas bill. Let's go, guys. Come on. Let's go. Hustle. Hustle up. Nice hustle, Ziggy. Let's go. All right, Zoe. Nice. Hey guys, I hope you got your PJs on. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. What a great story, guys, right? So it's time to go to sleep. I'm tired. I know you guys are. We have a story for you, Daddy. About what? A famous comedian. Really? Let me guess. His name was Todd Rex? No, T-Rex. Really? What happened? He had a big special coming up. A super big special coming up. Special? Nice. Everybody in the crowd was so excited to see T-Rex. And then one of his comedian friends brought him up on stage. All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, please welcome one of the funniest comedians and human beings that I know, the one and only Mr. Todd Rex! Wow, this is amazing. This must be very amazing for you. You're welcome. You're welcome. This must be very amazing for you. Thank you guys for coming out. This is fucking fantastic. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here. Uh, right off the bat, I have four kids, so I'm happy to be anywhere. These motherfuckers aren't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have kids. You know what I'm talking about. You love them, but sometimes you just want to get the fuck away from them because beating them is illegal. And, uh, so I just go on the road for a few days, you know. My kids cry, Daddy, are you really leaving for another five days? I'm like, dude, it's five days or five to seven years, motherfucker. I'm about to catch a charge. I can be back Monday or I can be back for graduation. Four of them, man. My oldest is 24. She graduated from Wesleyan two years ago. And, uh, and our youngest is in diapers. Yeah, he's 15. It's kind of fucked up at our house right now. This dude will not stop shitting his pants. I can't tell if he's smart or stupid as shit. Dude, you're still shitting your pants? I was like, dude, you're still changing them. I'm like, you got a point. One of us needs to knock this off. <laughs> like, kids will rob you of your time, your freedom, your money, your fun, you know, your ability to stay up late. They, they take all that, but you'll go back and fucking make more. <laughs> That's how good that vagina is. I'm like, let's do another one. I don't care. <laughs> My life is already over at this point. That's a gamble, right? And it's the worst gamble. The odds are horrible. 10 minutes of ecstasy for 18 years of responsibility. <laughs> Those are horrible odds. That's why I like old ladies now, man. Like, hot ladies don't even turn me on. Like, hot girls, hot chicks don't do it for me anymore, man, because three of my four kids were conceived while my wife was on birth control. One was the pill, and uh, other two times was IUD. I don't even know what an IUD is. My wife tried to describe what it is to me, but all I can picture is it's not working, number one. <laughs> Number two, I can only imagine it's like a crown on the tip of my penis going to the vagina, like, ah, where the eggs at? <laughs> wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. How do you want your eggs fertilized? Let's do this. Let's make lives and ruin them at the same time. 
That's why I like old ladies, hot girls. We go to Vegas and we go all over the country to see hot girls. And they're like, what do you think about her? I'm like, eh, that's a baby waiting to happen right there. You know, She's fertile, I'm potent, I can't have that. I need an old lady in my life. My friend's like, ain't nothing wrong with a cougar. I'm like, cougar, I need a saber tooth. I need them old. Like, no chance of pregnancy. Like, even if she does get a pregnancy, there's no way that she's gonna make it to term either. Like, Like, you want to turn me on, tell me at the last doctor's appointment, he told you to get your affairs in order. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> How'd it go with the doctor's mod? He told me to tie up any loose ends I may have. Hell yeah, he did. <laughs> Let's go back to your house and have sex in that hospital bed in the living room. The older they are, the better I like them, man. I need the white hair upstairs and downstairs. I won't even click on a video unless the thumbnail looks like she's sitting on a colonial wig. <laughs> I'm not boning old ladies, right? But, you know, four kids, though, man, wow. That'll make you reevaluate. Like, I can't tell you how many times, like, if you have kids, you know they always want to look at your phone, they always want to talk to you, XM, Disney, all the other, you know, the shit that little kids do. And I just got to get away from them. At least three times a day, I act like I'm taking a dump just to go in the bathroom and get some peace and quiet. <laughs> I'm sitting on the edge of the tub, just looking around the room, just checking stuff out, looking at grout lines. I never used to pay attention to grout lines. <laughs> Just to get away, I could probably do those tiles better. I'm not even a homeowner like that. Like, <laughs> I call people to fix it. I'm like, I could fucking do that better. Daddy, what are you doing in there? I'm snapping off a stink pickle, man. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> well, then why are you sitting on the tub? Are you fucking looking under the door, dude? Come on, man, give me some privacy. Why are you sitting on the tub? Look, man, I pay the mortgage. I'll shit where I want, all right? <laughs> When you pay the mortgage, you can take a dump in the sink. I don't care. I'm like, this dude is looking. Now I gotta be a method actor. Now I gotta put my pants and underwear to the floor and be in front of the toilet. I'm not even sitting on the toilet. One time I was standing in front of the toilet, pants and underwear around my ankles, and I got a glimpse of myself in the mirror. I looked awful. A telephone in my hand, t-shirt on, and dick out like Winnie the Pooh. I was like, what the fuck am I doing right now? I need to get my shit together. But I do like to get out of the house, man. Four kids, man. My, my, my 24-year-old has got to be the laziest kid on the fucking planet. Like, she won't even get her own tampons. I'm going to the store. I'm like, she's, where are you going? I'm going to the store. Okay, I'll see you when you get back. And then 10 minutes later, she'll call me. Oh, are you at the store yet? Yeah, I'm at the store. Can you pick me up some tampons? I'm like, why the fuck didn't you add? Why didn't you come with me? You knew I was coming. <laughs> you can't get your own goddamn tampons. She's like, you don't know what it's like. <laughs> you don't know it. I'm too dizzy from the blood loss. My underwear looks like the first 48. <laughs> it's a crime scene. You don't know what it's like. I hate buying tampons. I always feel like I'm robbing a bank when I go in to buy tampons. I have to case the joint first. I'm fucking walking around. <laughs> Make sure I don't know anybody in this motherfucker before I put some tampons on the counter. I don't know if you know this, ladies, but guys, we make judgments on your vagina based on the tampons your man puts on the counter. I'm standing in line behind a dude. He throws a box on the counter. I'm like, God damn. Super absorbent with odor control? <laughs> like, motherfucker, do you even want to go home right now? Like, you're fucking out, dude. Just keep fucking heading south. <laughs> the fuck are you doing? Odor control, like, super size. Looks like a stick of dynamite with a tugboat rope hanging off the end of it. <laughs> a cruise ship docking rope. Like, call my daughter. I'm like, all right, I'm talking to her on the phone. I'm like, all right, so which ones do you want? She's like, I need you to get me the sport tampons. The, I'm like, who the fuck is this? Sport, you're the laziest bitch in the house. What the fuck you need sport tampons for? Why don't you be a sport and get off the fucking couch and get your own fucking tampons instead of sending me down here. Just look for the girl running on the box. No, I'm not looking for the girl running. I'm looking for the fucking chick laying on the couch with the crumbs on her fucking chest. <laughs> fucking remote control. Like fucking Looking at the TV, I want to see the TV glow on the box on your face. <laughs> the lazy millennial tampons, this is a box of balled up napkins, you just put them in their underwear. The sport, the sport ones are just a couple tube socks. Just, there's, your, <laughs> there's, your there's your sport tampons, some tube socks. <laughs> Thank you.
Actually, I don't mind going to the store to get tampons. That, you know, it's a, getting tampons is a small price to pay for 20 minutes of freedom out of the house. I'll go to the store and get them damn tampons, but I got to sneak out of the house. My kids know I'm going to the store. They want to come with me. The little ones are like, we want to go, ice cream, chips. I'm like, fuck, I got to sneak out. So I open the garage door and go to the garage so they can't hear me open the front door. By the time they realize I'm out of the house, I'm already sideways down the driveway. <laughs> That's my time. Now I'm doing me. If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. Like You're like, holy shit, I'm by myself. I don't know what the fuck to do. Well, I don't have kids. Oh, my God, this is amazing. I'm fucking listening to hip-hop with all the cuss words, fucking smoking weed in the car. I'm jerking off. Woo! <laughs> fuck the police. Woo! <laughs> Throwing the bars up out of the sunroof, head out the window like Ace Ventura. Woo! <laughs> my neighbors think I'm crazy. What the hell is wrong with you? Come on, you know I have children. My 20-minute vacation to the store always turns into nothing less than an hour for no other reason than I ejaculated and fell asleep in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm ashamed to tell you how many times I've waken up 45 minutes later with my dick stuck to my stomach, <laughs> shuffling through the female products aisle. Come home, my wife was like, really? It took you an hour to go to the store? I'm like, I was looking for the specific tampons with the chick and a kayak on the box. And like, <laughs> Couldn't find them. And she was like, you jerked off again, didn't you? I'm like, what? This is ridiculous. Why would you think I jerked off in the parking lot? Because when you left the house, you were wearing two socks. Where's your other sock? <laughs> You're ridiculous. You, know, you better hope no one gets murdered in that parking lot. They're going to scour the parking lot, find one of your nutty socks, and tie you to that murder. <laughs> tie me to that nutty sock. That's a preposterous hypothesis. <laughs> Trying to sound adult. That's a preposterous hypothesis. Fast forward to 2.30 in the morning. I'm losing sleep, restless, laying in bed. I should probably go down there and get that fucking sock. <laughs> I can't go to jail for a fucking sock. <laughs> I talk a lot of shit about my family, but I love my kids, man. It's beautiful, man. They, they drive me nuts, but I wouldn't have it any other fucking way. I have three girls and a boy. My boy's the youngest. He's not really 15. He's seven, and he's out of diapers. <laughs> but having three girls is a lot different than having boys. My mom was like, you have to raise them on an equal playing field. I'm like, you can't raise them on an equal playing field, mom. And she's like, why not? And I was like, because girls are different than boys. It's just true. You can't raise them the same. Like, say there's two parents sitting at home, and they both get a call from the school. And one's a little boy and one's a little girl. And they call from the school and say, hey, we found a little girl in the closet sucking a little boy's dick. Which parent you want to be? <laughs> right? <laughs> They're different. Like, when you got girls, and it's different from boys. Like, my son, I just have to worry about his dick. With girls, I got to worry about all the dicks. <laughs> And I hate it. All the dicks are coming to my house looking for my older daughters. They're all talking all gentlemanly when they meet me. Like, oh, Mr. Rex, you got a nice house here, Mr. Rex. You must be doing very well for yourself. <laughs> oh, is that the missus? What a stunning vision of beauty. <laughs> now I see where your daughter gets it from. I I. When a kid starts doing this, when he's looking at your wife, I I. <laughs> my brother told me, he's like, look, man, you want to scare these kids? What you got to do is get a pistol. Clean the pistol when they come over. I'm like, I'm not, kidding. I'm not cleaning the pistol in front of these kids. Half these kids probably got better weaponry than I got. <laughs> I start cleaning the gun, the kid walk in. Oh, I got one of those too, except my firing pins filed down, so that shit's auto. <laughs> I let these kids know I'm crazy on a whole nother level. They come into my house. I, I scare the shit out of them. They come to the door. I see them pull up in the driveway. I come to the door in gear. I got my robe on. Some sandals and a sombrero. <laughs> Ass naked underneath, just all that shit was in my dick. <laughs> With a semi, it's not hard, it's just enough that it's not touching the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me? Oh. Um, and slowly masturbate and make eye contact. The creepy eye contact with no facial expression is what sells it. Like, you just know, like, you're doing it, but don't even like it. <laughs> I 
got to follow those some creepy shit like, yo, come on in, young man. Have a seat next to that jar of Vaseline with all the hair in it. <laughs> the threat of getting touched by a grown man's penis <laughs> is stronger than the threat of getting shot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if a motherfucker put a gun in my face and a dick in my face, I have to, like, shoot. Ah! <laughs> You gonna hit me in a vital organ with a fucking pistol? Like, that dick ain't circumcised, son. I don't know if I can take that one. <laughs> Seriously, you don't think a dick is scary? Get in a fight and see what happens if you take your dick out. The dynamic of the fight changes immediately. You begin your ass beat, like, fuck, oh, shit, okay, all right, this is fucking, I didn't want to do this, fuck. <laughs> as soon as your dick comes in, hey, 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 don't touch me with that dick, man. Stop playing, man, stop. Hey, 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 hey! Trying to get your friends. Hey, someone tackle this motherfucker! Your friend's like, I'm not getting my new shirt all dicky. <laughs> I'm glad you're right there with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll, I'll clean it up. <laughs> Me and my wife, we named all our daughters together, Taylor, Zoe, and Zion. My youngest daughter, Zion, she's nine. She asked where we uh, got the names from for our daughters. Where are all the kids in the family? And Taylor was like, yeah, this should be fun. <laughs> so uh, we sat him down. I was like, all right, guys, gather around. Let me tell you how you got your names and what they mean. I was like, Zion, since you asked what your name means and where it came from, uh, well, Zoe used to love lions, and she wanted to name you a, na a Z name, but she decided, how about Zion? Like lion, but with a Z. So we named you Zion, and it's cool because it means safe haven and protector of man. And she was like, yay! And then Zoe was like, well, what does my name mean? And I was like, Zoe means life, and that's exactly what you've given us by being here. You've given us life. And she was like, oh, that's so sweet. And Taylor was like looking at her phone, and she was like, what does my name mean? <laughs> And I was like, uh, fixer of clothes. <laughs> That's the first time I ever heard her cut. She was like, motherfucker, really? <laughs> it was easy to name all our girls together because we just sat down and we came up with names together and it was a process, but I don't know what it was about after having three girls, having a boy, finally putting the stem on the apple, I wanted to name my son. I wanted him to have the coolest name on the planet. Like, you know, our last name is Rex, which means king in Latin. It's a great last name, so I'm not gonna have him. Like, Elliot Rex. <laughs> <laughs> if your name's Elliot, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Elliot's gonna be like, fuck this guy. <laughs> Elliot's of the world unite. <laughs> fuck this guy. So I decided that I was gonna be the sole one to name my son because I have a pretty cool idea of what I want to name my son. I had a cool, you know, a couple ideas. And my wife was like, we should, we should have a conversation about what we are naming our son. <laughs> and uh, no, she doesn't really sound like that. <laughs> but that's the voice I go to when I start losing arguments. And every guy in here does that with their wife. Yo, you coming over to watch the game? Yo, I was going to, but then my wife came home talking about, we're going to the movies and then we're gonna go do a wine tasting and there's gonna be Merlot and Pinot Grigio and it's gonna be amazing. Bridget from HR is gonna be there. Women, you do the same thing. You made it, you make it sound like you married the dumbest dude on the planet. You make it, <laughs> my wife does it all the time. I never said I was taking the dishes out of the dishwasher. She's like, yes, you did. You were like, I'm gonna take the dishes out of the dishwasher. And I'm gonna put them away too, and they're gonna be so proud of me. And then I'm gonna lay on the couch and scratch my penis for three hours. Oh, that's what I said, I'm gonna scratch my penis. That's what you said. <laughs> my poor kids are watching this shit like, would you guys knock it off? It's a school night. Like, I'm trying to, but your mom's like, <laughs> yeah, because your dad's like, no. Nah. Poor kids. <laughs> so my wife is very intellectual. She's the smartest person. Outside of marrying me, she's the smartest fucking person I've ever met in my life. 
<laughs> That's her clapping like shit back there. <laughs> That's the best shit he said all night. So when I had to shut the names down that she had chosen, I had, you know, I just had to shut them. I can't just say I don't like that name. I had to come up with a ridiculous reason. The more ridiculous the reason, the better it is for me because it shows I put in some effort. So she, she, I saw the list ahead of time, so I had shit planned. So she was like, okay, well, I have some names. And I was like, let me hear these bullshit names you got picked out. <laughs> I just started talking different around the house. I was like, like super macho about it. I was like, let me hear these names that you have picked out. These bullshit names. And she was like, well, what about the name Cody? I'm like, death sentence. And she was like, what? And I was like, Cody's don't live to be old. You've never met an 80 year old Cody? There's no 80 year olds walking around Shady Acres retirement community. Hey, oh, they called me the Coaster. This is my best friend, Tristan. <laughs> Cody's always die young doing dumb shit like X Games stuff, wingsuiting and jumping dirt bikes. Watch the X Games, watch how many kids are named Cody. Those motherfuckers don't live long. She wanted to name my son after me. My name is Todd. Fucking Todd. It's not even a name, it's a sound, Todd. It's not short for anything. My name's not Toddathan, it's just fucking Todd. My brother's name is Greg, but his full name is Gregory. When he got in trouble, my mom was like, Gregory? There's no way to fucking extend my name because just say it longer. Todd! <laughs> Maybe put another syllable in there. Todd! <laughs> Two? Oh, shit. Your report card's downstairs. Todd. It sounds like some caveman shit, doesn't it? Me, Todd, Todd. <laughs> Todd. Todd, me, Todd. Hard consonant, vowel consonant, Todd. It's a sound. It's the same sound a turd makes after it rolls out of a giraffe's ass. <laughs> Todd. And I'm a light-skinned black dude named Todd. I don't sound scary at all. You describe me to somebody, that doesn't sound a light-skinned black dude named Todd. Like, I used to go to school with a kid named Mike Thomas. This kid was blue-black. You see people like that, like Superman hair, like when Superman's hair gets hit with the, the light, his hair looks blue, that's how this kid Mike was. I was sitting in math class one time and the sunlight came through the window and hit the back of Mike's neck and I was like, this motherfucker's blue? <laughs> My buddy Donnie, he was next to me, he was just fucking with me, he was like, yeah, I met his parents, his dad's a Negro, his mom's a mailbox. <laughs> His nickname was Black Mike. It sounds fucked up, but there was 30 kids named Mike in high school and you didn't want to have to run down their whole pedigree. You just say, which Mike are you talking about? Fucking Black Mike. The purple kid from algebra, got it. <laughs> it sounds fucked up, but it's a good way to like narrow it down. We had Chinese Mike. The fucked up part about that is he was Filipino. Like no one even. No one even put in the legwork to find out what kind of Asian this guy was. Hey, slanted eyes, Chinese Mike. <laughs> it's, it's fucked up, but it was... That's high school, we were idiots. And black Mike got respect immediately. Because his name was, he was fucking black and his name was Black Mike. That's some scary shit. You sit in class in 10th grade and someone says, hey man, I don't know what you did, but Black Mike is looking for you. <laughs> you might get a little nervous. Holy shit, really? I've got to fight some dude named Black Mike? I don't want to fight Black Mike, no. I got to go to college in two years. <laughs> I didn't strike that same fear in your heart. You're sitting in class and someone says, hey man, I don't know what you did, but Beige Todd is looking for you. <laughs> Beige Todd? Isn't that that khaki kid from home economics? Man, tell him I said, fuck you, and step on his sandals for me. <laughs> My wife told me I'm pantyhose colored. <laughs> she said that right in the middle of an argument. It defused the argument immediately. I couldn't argue after that. I started laughing. I was like, <laughs> she's like, fuck you, pantyhose colored motherfucker. I was like, fuck you. That's funny, but fuck you too. Fuck. Can't come back from pantyhose. 
I use that to my advantage. <laughs> we start arguing about money. <laughs> I'm like, what do you want me to do? Start robbing banks? I can't. I put pantyhose on my face. I'll look exactly the fucking same. <laughs> I'm a black dude living in Los Angeles. I'm not allowed to buy a ski mask. I don't know if you know that. Black people can't buy ski masks in a warm weather climate. White people go into Big Five, throw a fucking ski mask on the counter, they ring it right up. I throw it on the counter. They want to do a background check. There's a three-day waiting period. It's like buying a gun. They're like, really, Kunta Kinte? You're heading up to the mountains this weekend? Hitting the slopes, are you? Yeah, nice try. Put it back. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. <laughs> so my name was out of the question. She wanted to name my son Chase. My daughter Zoe has two friends named Chase, both great kids, athletes, scholars, great kids. My wife was like, what's wrong with Chase? We should name our son Chase. And I was like, we can't name our son Chase. And she was like, why not? And I was like, um, because there's no black Chases. All the Chases we know are white. And she was like, so? And I was like, so you know how they call my friend Black Mike? What are they gonna call our son? Chase the black kid? <laughs> that sounds like a horrible game played in Charlottesville. <laughs> my son walk outside, hey, there he is, Chase the black kid. <laughs> All the other black kids are like, wait, no, no! <laughs> Relax, Malik. <laughs> Where are you going, Jamal? <laughs> Talking about him, Chase, comma, the black kid. <laughs> Punctuation is very important. I made t-shirts that I thought were hilarious. You know, because I'm half black and half white, so my t-shirt said, half black lives matter. <laughs> and I sold these shirts, and this dude in Charlotte, North Carolina, bought one shirt on a Friday night, brought it back Saturday, and he was like, dude, he had it balled up in a bag, and he's like, take the shit back. I don't even want my fucking money back. I just gotta let you know that I almost got killed wearing that fucking shirt. <laughs> And I was like, why? And he was like, because you need to hyphenate half black. Because it just says half black lives matter. Now I'm walking around a white dude with a shirt that says half black lives matter. Like, not all you niggas are matter. <laughs> only half you matter. Let's not be ridiculous. We need some shit done around here, but the rest of you can go back to Africa. <laughs> Chase. My wife was like, this black kid's named Chase. I was like, you never met a black kid named Chase. She started looking up at the ceiling, trying to find the answer, and I was like, you've never met a black kid named Chase, just like you've never met a baby named Larry. <laughs> I want y'all to think about that for a second. Isn't that some weird shit? Like, think about it. Everybody in this room knows a Larry, but not a single person in this room has ever met a baby named Larry. Where the fuck are they coming from <laughs> if they've never been babies? Right? You didn't know a Larry growing up. You met Larry in your 20s. That's because that's how old they are when they let him out of the fucking factory. <laughs> or the lab or whatever it is, fucking like Laria 51, wherever that is. <laughs> Larry's 25, 26 years old, they open the lab, let him out, he fucking stumbles into society, he's fucking, he's afraid, he doesn't know anybody, that's why all your friends named Larry is a great fucking guy, he's a sweetheart, he just wants to be accepted, he'll give you the last dollar out of his pocket, he'll help you move without asking for anything in return, great fucking guy, sweetheart, never been a fucking baby, but a great fucking guy. <laughs> You think I'm bullshitting? Ask your friend Larry to see a baby picture. He can't produce it. It's creepy. Let me see a baby picture, Larry. Come on, man. You know they got burned up in the fire of 96. You were never a fucking baby, Larry. I'm on to you, Larry. Whatever your real name is, Experiment 626 or whoever you are. So yeah, man, like I said, my last name is Rex, which means king in Latin. That's why I go by T-Rex a lot of the time. People ask me, like, why you go by T-Rex? Like, comedians, I'll check in the hotel, they'll be like, your real last name is Rex? I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, that's where T-Rex, I'm Todd Rex. Taylor Rex, Zoe Rex, Zion Rex, Sarah Rex, Marguerite Beck Rex, Greg Rex. It's my whole family. So what did I name my son, you might be asking? Probably the coolest name on the fucking planet. My son's name is Maximus Rex. <laughs> Maximus Rex, are you not entertained? <laughs> when he came out, I held him up. I was like, leader of the free people, general of the Republic's army. My wife was still on drugs on the bed, like, don't forget, son of Beige Todd. <laughs> Beige Todd. <laughs> to ruin my moment. She was appalled by the name. She was like, are we really naming this dude Maximus Rex? Really, his name is Maximus Rex. He's either gonna be a dragon slayer or a hairdresser. <laughs> and dragons aren't real. 
so prepare for Salon Maximus. Okay, Salon Maximus. She kept on saying it with that super wet, effeminate S, you know. <laughs> I go, I, see, I hear it all the time. I go into stores with my kids and uh, <laughs> I can't say the name of the store, but let's just say it's like one less than Forever 22. <laughs> I walk in with my daughters and we're looking for some earrings or whatever, like, so, sir, is there something I can help you search for? Something special for that certain someone, perhaps? So I'm like, ah, damn, dude. <laughs> yeah, my daughters are looking for some earrings. Oh, you want to talk to Steven from Accessories. <laughs> Steven from Accessories. <laughs> I'm summoning you, sir. <laughs> Steven comes prancing in and pops out the dude in the butt. <laughs> Stop, Steven, you savage. I'm still sore from Sunday's escapades. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm joking, obviously. I don't want anybody to get offended. This guy came out. I was doing a show in Vegas a few, uh, few months back, and this guy came up to me after the show. I was in the casino, and he comes up to me. He's like, excuse me, sir. And I was like, what's up, man? And he was like, I just saw your show. And I was like, oh, nice. And he was like, nice. I wasn't giving you kudos. <laughs> I was like, ugh, I've never heard that word used for real before, like, like in the wild. I've never heard that shit. <laughs> kudos, where'd they do that at? And he was like, actually, I have a bone to pick with you. And I was like, this is getting fucking worse. <laughs> a bone to pick, ugh. And he was like, actually, I was defended at your ridiculous choice of characterization of whatever it's called, the impersonation, when you were doing the super wet S. It was ridiculous. I'm like, like the one you're fucking doing right now. And he's like, well, guess, asshole. And before you ask, I am on the other team. And I was like, wasn't gonna ask. And he was like, what I'm saying is, you being a comedian so many years, I thought you'd be a little more creative and maybe come up with a different voice than the most stereotypical one out there. Maybe try a different one. And I was like, he's like, not all gay men sound like this. And I was like, all right, man, I wasn't trying to make it sound like all gay men sound like that, all right? I apologize if I offended you. And he was like, thank you. And I was like, although not all gay men sound like that, I will say that all men that sound like that are gay. <laughs> And he accepted that. We came to a happy meeting. He was like, touche, touche. <laughs> and it fucked me up. Then he complimented me on my show and then he left. But the fucked up thing was his face left about a second and a half after his body. It was like, you were fantastic otherwise. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. His body knew where he was going before his face. But that's confidence. Your body just starts leaving when you're... Like his body's like, I'm out of here. His face is like, I'm gonna take a couple more seconds. Of... <laughs> wrists out, his wrists knew where they were going too. They were, we were all going this way. <laughs> Come on, head, keep up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I have a friend whose son is gay and we've known he was gay since he was five years old and he's 17 now. And all of our friends that used to hang out we used to say, like, dude, is this kid, maybe it is really, it's not a choice. Maybe you really are born that way. And I hadn't seen this kid for 12 years, and I see his father, and we're talking, and I'm like, so how's he doing? He's like, oh, man, it's cool. He's, I mean, he's 17 now. Last time you saw him, he was five. I just found out he's gay. And I was like, motherfucker, you just found out? Like, when we were having football parties at your house, and he was coming out with his football jersey tied up in the front, that wasn't like... And, like, nothing? But I, you can't say that you knew. You have to act like you never knew. You have to act, what? <laughs> no, and I was over the top of that. I overcompensated. I was like, nah, not little Dave the Lady Killer. <laughs> not little Dave the Vagina Wrecker, for real? Nah! I was so over the top. My boy was like, god damn, you knew this whole time? I was like, <laughs> kind of did. He's like, I don't know what to do, man. And I know you got a young son, man, and man to man as dudes out here raising little soldiers. <laughs> now he's trying to get militant on me. Raising soldiers out here in the streets. If he found out your son sucked the dick. 
How would you make him stop? I can tell you that when I was about 12 years old, my dad caught me smoking a cigarette and he made me smoke 20 back to back. <laughs> this motherfucker lost, he was like, what? What? Ah! I'm supposed to make my son change some 20 dicks, man. You want my son to change some 20 dicks? I was like, calm down, man. I never got past the third cigarette. <laughs> Can you handle three? <laughs> Rash him out. Don't give him all 20 at once. He might lose his mind. <laughs> then you're gonna find yourself coaching the dick sucking. No, suck him one at a time! Stop coaching. I get asked some of the weirdest shit about my complexion. Like, I, we were down, I went down to uh, Charlotte and we were performing down there and we went to Charlotte Motor Speedway. They, the club was like, you guys wanna go check out the NASCAR experience? <laughs> and it was the Coca-Cola 600 or whatever was going on. So we went down there and checked it out. But I was ordering food at a food truck and this dude asked me the weirdest question. I've never been asked this question before and it was offensive. I'm ordering my food and this dude comes up behind me and he was like, hey dude. And I was like, kind of looked over my shoulder. I'm like, what's up, man? He's like, hey, dude, I don't want to sound ignorant or nothing. <laughs> you know what that means. I was like, what's up, man? He's like, hey, dude, uh, dude, what are you? And I was like, what am I? And he was like, yeah, I mean, you know, what are you? And I was like, I'm a fucking carbon-based life form. I'm an oxygen breather, man. What? He was like, enough of the fancy word, dude. I'm just saying, I mean, you're, you're kind of dark-skinned, but you talk regular. I was incredulous. I didn't know what to say. I was like, well, you're white and you don't. He took a page out of the other guys, but he was like, touche, touche. Rednecks often do that. They use foreign language to make it appear that they're smarter than they really are. You ever watch cops? The dude's beating his wife. The cops go, let me come in and talk to you. Hey, dude, entree, me, Casa, Sue, Casa. He's a foreign language. Hi, baby, look at my new hat. I just bought it. Well, la de da. <laughs> That's French for big whoop. <laughs> rednecks to me are the scariest motherfuckers on the planet. Like, I don't fuck with rednecks. She clapping, you know what I'm talking about. Like, if people talk about terrorists and all that. Yeah, terrorists are scary, but rednecks are the scariest motherfuckers on the planet. To me, they are. Like, you fucking heard, and remember after 9-11, this is when I realized that rednecks were the key to fucking winning wars. We could take 20 rednecks from Charlotte, North Carolina and put them in the Middle East, the war would be over, gas would be 39 cents a gallon. <laughs> after 9-11, everybody was upset, but rednecks were acting like planes were hitting trailer parks. They were coming on the news, grabbing microphones from reporters. You don't come in my fucking backyard. <laughs> you understand me? Use my air vehicles to pull off your terrorist bullshit. I fucking had it up there. <laughs> Fucking had it up to here. Rednecks always repeat shit twice in case you didn't hear it the first time. I'm fucking pissed off, dude. I'm fucking pissed off. I'm fucking seeing red, man. I'm fucking seeing red. They don't want it with me. They don't fucking want it with me. I'm nasty, dude. I'm nasty. Connie Chung was interviewing this dude. He just snatched the mic from Connie Chung and started cussing. I'm ready to go over there and drop some fucking nuclear fire on them motherfuckers over there and turn that shit to a parking lot. You understand me? Connie Chung was like, excuse me, sir, you're on national television. You can't talk like that. Get the fuck off me, Connie Chung. You ain't supposed to be here neither. <laughs> right? I don't know if you're sleepy or what, but open your eyes when I'm talking to you. <laughs> I was like, God damn. Then some, said some horribly geographically wrong shit. He's like, what you need to do is take your Chinese ass back to Japan with all the other Vietnamese people. <laughs> Connie Chung was like, what? <laughs> I'm not Chinese, Japanese, or Vietnamese. Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, Chuck E. Cheese, you're all the same. <laughs> it's put you in different places. That's why you can't go anywhere in Korea without seeing a Chinaman.
Rednecks are scary, man. They got that battle cry. That shit is scary, man. We need to utilize that battle cry over in the Middle East because they got their battle cry over there. That shit is on deck. You go, you go watch any of those videos. In the name of Allah. <laughs> That's some scary shit. Send a poor kid from the inner city over to the Middle East. Garcia, go in that building at the end of the block and tell me what you see. Aye, aye, Captain, on my way. Halfway down there. In the name of Allah. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Garcia's like, holy shit, Sarge. I can't go in that building. Did you hear that fucking lulu, lulu, lulu? No, nothing good ever happens after one of those. All right, where's that country motherfucker from Charlotte? Get your ass down there. All right, dude, on my way. Woo! <laughs> Fucking hauling ass down there in his fatigues with his <laughs> fatigues tucked into his cowboy boots. <laughs> Halfway down there, in the name of Allah, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> that motherfucker's not even slowing down. Are you shitting me? Is it turkey season over here, too? <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. Yeah! That fucking Yehu is fucking scientifically designed to scare the shit out of anybody with any melanin in their skin. <laughs> that shit is fucking frightening. Nothing good follows a Yehu. It's always a fucking car in the air. <laughs> fucking minority in the air. <laughs> shit just got real. <laughs> Those motherfuckers would give up in a second. Yehu! Holy shit, motherfucker! Seriously, are you serious right now, motherfucker? Fucking Yihu? <laughs> Holy shit, no, I didn't hear nothing about Yihu in the training video. I did everything. I did the monkey bars, I did everything. But fucking Yihu? No, fuck the bullshit. I quit. <laughs> what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing, motherfucker? I'm literally and figuratively throwing in the towel. I fucking quit. <laughs> Yihu, really? <laughs> really? Black people, we invented talking shit, but rednecks perfected it. You can't talk a redneck out of a fight. Being a black dude or you know, somewhat black, I got a little bit of advantage, just talk tough. I can scare a regular white guy, got a house, job, family, teeth. <laughs> He's not trying to lose none of that shit. Hey, motherfucker, you stepped on my shoe. Holy shamoles. <laughs> you are rather large, I apologize, I didn't see your foot. I, uh, I have a $20 bill to keep this verbal and not make it physical. Take the $20 bill. I believe you people call it a dub. Take the dub. <laughs> redneck, you could outweigh a redneck by 100 pounds. He'll talk so much shit back. You'll wonder why you said anything to this crazy little motherfucker. Like, hey, motherfucker, you stepped on my shoe. Well, your goddamn face shouldn't be so fucking big now, shouldn't they? <laughs> oh, no, you can't have a regular size shoe like a human fucking being. What is that, 13, fucking 14? I'm amazed you're even standing upright, motherfucker. Are you the missing link between man and ape? Hey, everybody in the comedy club, I discovered the missing link. Someone called the Smithsonian. I want my reward. <laughs> you look like number three on the evolution chart. You probably got to wear platform shoes so your knuckles don't drag when you walk, goddammit. <laughs> I'm ball your fist, boy. You ain't gonna have no luck fighting me. I'm a bad son of a bitch. You ever see me fighting a bear? You better jump in and help that bear. I'm nasty. I'm nasty, dude. You don't want it with me. You're ever on the phone with God and I call. You better click over and see what the fuck I want. I'll fill this whole room with uppercut. I'll hit you with so many rights, you'll beg me for a left. You understand me? You ain't gonna have no luck fighting me. Type of luck you got, you can fall into a barrel of titties and come up sucking your thumb, goddammit. I'm nasty. You could be running naked across the field of pussies and trip on the dick. Look here, man. <laughs> Hell, next time you see me coming at you, you're black, dude. You're musical. Turn it to a dance move. Cha-cha slide, turn to the side. <laughs> God damn. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. Trying to make it this Hollywood game, man. Trying to lose a little bit of weight. It's not going so well. <laughs> Fucking, uh, this is how I knew I had to lose some weight. My son, who's now seven, when he was like two, I was rocking him to sleep, and I fell asleep, and when I woke up, he was sucking my titty. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the phone with the gym immediately. <laughs> how much is the one-year membership? <laughs> my son's like, ee, ee, ee. Hold on, I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, go ahead, what? <laughs> My fitness goals, <laughs> to get my son to stop sucking my jugs. <laughs> you got a boot camp for that, damn handsome? <laughs> There's so many facets 
to this Hollywood shit, man. Just when you think you have it dialed in, there's something else that comes around. And then it just fucking throws your whole shit off. It's difficult. It's long. Like, I've been doing this shit for 26 years. Finally getting a shot. But it was like my wife and I were laying in bed. We were watching one of those shows, like one of those behind the music or E! True Hollywood stories. We watched like four of them back to back. And my wife hit pause after the fourth one. She was like, holy shit. I figured out the key to success. And I'm like, what is it? And she was like, tragedy. And I'm like, what? And she was like, every one of those episodes you just watched had, a, uh, had an element of tragedy that befell the celebrity in question. And that's where celebrity happens. You can either throw in the towel in the face of adversity or you can use that tragedy as fuel to propel you to the next level. And I was thinking about it. I was like, holy shit, you're right. And she was like, you're right. And then she was like, yeah, and you've never had any tragedy in your life. And I started thinking about it. I was like, holy fuck, you're right. I haven't had any tragedy. And so I started looking around at all the people that surround me and wondering who I'm willing to let go of to make this shit happen. <laughs> and then two years ago, it happened. Be careful what you ask for because it happened. Two years ago, I went to Washington, D.C. to celebrate Thanksgiving with my family, where I'm from originally. And um, it, was a little, it gets hard for me to talk about. I, uh, I went back there, and the night before Thanksgiving, I went out drinking with my best friends that I grew up with. And uh, fuck. Um, I saw my grandma's titties that night. And, um, <laughs> really, guys? Really? There's a laugh in my face when I'm trying to open up to you? I don't know if you've ever seen your grandma's titties, but that's some tragic shit. Like, I'm ready to make it in Hollywood now. Like, I don't know if you've ever... Have you ever seen your grandma's titties? They're fucking horrendous. My grandma's titties look like two horse noses. They're all long and veiny, and one's longer than the other, so it looks like a photo finish. Big brown by a nose. <laughs> They're awful. This is how it happened. Old people get up early as shit for nothing. There's no reason for old people to get up as early as they do. I'm sneaking into my grandparents' house at 2.30 in the morning, stumbling drunk. I'm trying to get in the house to, to as quiet as possible to evade detection. I open the front door. My grandmother's standing there. We're face to face, scared to shit of each other. <laughs> and I was the... <laughs> my grandmother's very hunchback. It's got to be hollow because it was very deep and resonant. <laughs> I was coming from back there. I'm like, Grandma, why are you out of bed at 2.30 in the morning? I heard noise on the front porch. I thought it was the newspaper. At 2.30 in the morning, the shit ain't even printed yet. <laughs> Go back to sleep, but she won't, because when you're 93, sleep is the cousin of death. <laughs> so once she's up, she's up. All her friends that died, died in their sleep, so she ain't risking it. She has a coffee IV just shuffling around the house, mainlining Folgers straight to the vein. I, I got so much caffeine in my system, I can't even blink. I can't die if I can't close my eyes. <laughs> Come on, Grim Reaper, I got something for you, baby. So she's up, and all I want to do is just lay down. I'm like a four-year-old. I'm just like, I want to just go lay down. <laughs> Stop standing in the doorway and let me pass. <laughs> she just wants to ask me a bunch of questions. Who were you hanging out with tonight? Who was there? Were there a lot of fine young ladies in the house? What were you drinking tonight? Who's on the wheels of steel? You're gonna wait till 2.30 in the morning when I'm shit-faced to start trying to relate to me? <laughs> so I just had to turn the tables and start asking her a bunch of fucked up questions to make her leave me alone. Grandma, how did you let your back get higher than your head? <laughs> I just wanted to lay down and she's trying to, <laughs> why am I able to see your back in your driver's license picture? <laughs> why does it perpetually look like someone standing behind you? And probably the most fucked up question I asked, well, what are we supposed to do at the funeral when you won't lay down in the casket? <laughs> I'll be telling the funeral director, we don't need the pillow. We're saving that $25. Take that pillow out of the fucking... She hasn't touched the pillow in 17 years. <laughs> They're going to be like, we're going to have to comb her wig to the back and put her arm up on the side because we can't close the casket right now. Just make it look like she's in a convertible. <laughs> Like she's in a tub. <laughs> All I want to do is just lay down. I want. I'm, I'm like at the. I'm. I'm the type of drunk that I just want to kick my shoes off and fall face first into the pillow and just knock out. And that's where I am. I kick my shoes off. I fall into the pillow, and I'm about to pass out. And everybody's been there where you've been. You're in that little ethereal state of being half awake and half asleep. 
and you hear something that startles you awake, but you can't tell if you really heard it or dreamt that you heard it, isn't that the scariest shit in the world? Especially when you're home alone and the house is locked up tight. You're passing out, almost asleep, and then you hear something. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> is there someone in my house? Now, if you're in your living room and you fall asleep on the couch and you hear a noise in your living room, and it wakes you up, and you're like, what the fuck was that? You might like sneak into the other room and grab a baseball bat or a knife or something and be like, what the fuck? Someone in my house? But something about being asleep in bed makes you lazy as shit. For you. And this is for your own safety. You won't even get out of bed. You just start greeting the potential murderer. You hear a noise like, hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> Has that ever stopped a murder from happening? Like the murderer's coming through the house with a knife and he hears a, hello? <laughs> yeah? I wasn't going to stab the shit out of you, but I'm a sucker for a warm salutation. <laughs> that greeting was warm as hell. I'm gonna... So anyway, that's where I am. I'm passing out. And I hear this shit I've never heard before. If you've ever spent the night with old people, you know they got to get rid of this phlegm. they got to hack up these chest clams. they got to get rid of them. This throat oysters got to get out. <laughs> After a night of Jaeger bombs, not the best time to hear this for the first time. I'm... I'm passing out, I'm half asleep, and all of a sudden I hear <laughs> I'm so disoriented, it's pitch black in the room, I'm still doing this. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Native American? I was like, oh shit, okay, I must be tripping, wow. So I put my head back on the pillow, as soon as my head hit the pillow, it started right back up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all the way awake now. I'm under the covers like a beehive. What the fuck is that? Like four or five minutes of nothing happening, my fear started turning to anger, and now I'm getting mad. Who the fuck is watching Jurassic Park at 2.47 in the morning? <laughs> Turn it down! <laughs> ew, ew, ah. I kick the covers off, stumble out into the living room to turn the TV down, if not off, and when I get out to the living room, the TV's already off, and that scared the shit out of me. That told me whatever's making those noises is in the fucking house. And like I said, I'm half black and half white at that point. My two halves completely separated. <laughs> the black half of me wanted to get the fuck out of the house immediately. The white half had the insatiable urge to investigate. <laughs> and the white half won. I'm inching my way down the hallway towards the only light on in the house that's coming out of the bathroom. Whatever it is, it's in that fucking bathroom. <laughs> I don't even know the prayer. I'm just making up shit. <laughs> really? I peek around into the bathroom. I see the most horrifying, gruesome, macabre shit I've ever seen in my life. I see my grandmother standing in front of the sink wearing those horrible orthopedic support compression stockings from the hospital. She's wearing those. And uh, that's it. <laughs> Choking up lungers. <laughs> Titties banging it. And the worst part is, I'm seeing this happen from the back. <laughs> the longest, gnarliest titties banging off the saddest ass cheeks I've ever seen in my life. Every time they're swinging back around the front, they're grazing the sink. It sounds like a full court basketball game. Skip, 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 skip. For three, skip, 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 skip. from downtown, skip, skip, skip. he's heating up. Skip, skip, skip. Couldn't take it anymore. I'm like, Grandma! I guess I scared her, startled her. She did a 180 and almost took me out with the titties. Ah, who's that? <laughs> I was drunk, but I moved quick. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, one titty sits lower than the other one, so I had to matrix the first titty. <laughs> I had enough time to get my timing down to double dutch the second one. 
just dragging across the tile. <laughs> now she's just standing there looking at me. I'm like, Grandma, close the door. I'm sorry, baby. Is the light bothering you? <laughs> Initially, no. But now that I'm looking at those illuminated fun bags, yeah, kill the lights. They're awful, like grapefruits and tube socks. You look like a pro hacky sack player every time you go up the steps. I did those jokes on TV. Don't clap and I'm gonna get in trouble. I already got in trouble for doing those on television one time. She saw me do those jokes. She cut, and I knew, I told her to watch. It was a huge mistake. And she called me the next day and I just sent it to voicemail because I knew what it was about. I didn't want to hear it. I was in a good mood from the show. I was like, I'm not listening to this shit. Sent it to voicemail and then later on that night I listened to the voicemail and it was enraging. It was like a minute of her yelling at me. And the worst part about her yelling at me about doing the jokes about her titties was that she leaves her name at the end of the voicemail. Like I have no idea who the fuck it is. Like it's the big reveal. She was like, I saw your bullshit last night on TV. You talked about my titties for 20 goddamn minutes on national television. What the hell is wrong with you? I know you think everything is a joke, but this ain't no joke. These are my real titties in my real life. I told all my girls from church, my church, my Bible study class to watch my grandson on TV. Now I can't go back to my Bible study classes. All my girlfriends gonna be talking about here comes big, long titty Margaret coming. <laughs> so, you talk about my titties for 20 goddamn minutes on national television. You need to knock that off, leave my titties in my blouse and not in your routine. And you better call me back and let me know you got this message. This is grandma, by the way. <laughs> Followed by her signature hang up, which is another minute and a half of her trying to hang up the phone. Call me back, this grandma, by the way. <laughs> talking to herself, what the hell going on? I'm a motherfucker. Anyway, guys, you guys have been fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. Let's go, guys. Good job. Let's go. Good By job, the way, thanks. Daddy, you killed her last night. What? You killed her last night. You did kill her last night, baby. Don't talk about my titties on TV no more. I'm talking to you. Ga, 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 ga. Ga, 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 ga. Ooh, hey. I used to be able to do the helicopter with them, but they a little too long for that now. <laughs> too pendulous, baby. That's how I fight them all. You know you like what you see, baby. No one can resist the 46 long. I used to. Take my titties at the Long Titty Club in Chicago. They look like grapefruits and tube socks. Look at that bounce mouth. Bow, bow. Now, you want a hot dog, one, baby? I let Frederick Douglass suck on one of them. George Washington Carver slapped at the other one with peanut butter. Each inch is like a year, like a tree ring. <laughs> This is my grand, come here, grandbaby, come here. Give your grandma a kiss, come here, baby. Dig deep in them pockets. What's a bitch gotta do to make it rain up in here? Uh, hey, come on now, uh, uh. These titties used to sit in the back of the bus. 